you know, with the Mariners game. Any Mariners fans here? Isn't that the saddest cheer ever? <laughs> They're the, they're the saddest franchise in history. They really are. If you don't know this about the Mariners, uh, every other team, there's 32 teams in baseball. Every other team uh, besides the Nationals and the Mariners have been to a World Series or won a World Series. The Mariners have never even been there. They've never even been past the second round of the world uh, of the playoffs. That's how bad they are, okay? And the only other team that's like them is the Nationals, and they used to be the Expos, and they moved them from Montreal, and they're like, maybe they're gonna be better in the Americas. I don't know, right? It's like, they suck so bad in Canada, Canada's like, ah, they are so bad, we don't want them here, right? <laughs> Make them the Nationals, right? <laughs> like it's, it's, so they are better than us, too. That's what's crazy. Uh, I went to a Mariners game, and people are still sitting in the, uh, the bleachers in the outfield yelling at the players. Does that ever bother you? When people are just out there like, hey, 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 yo, Geraldo, you suck. <laughs> and they never hear him, you know, because it's a loud stadium. But in the Mariners, you know, in, in you know, T-Mobile Park, you know, Incarnacion, hey, 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 what? <laughs> You suck? <laughs> okay. Can we go on? Can you sign this, please? Could you sign this? <laughs> and it occurred to me that interaction, that's Twitter. That's all Twitter is. <laughs> Except instead of baseball players, it's just anybody who's famous who wants to say anything to anybody. They have an account with millions of people just going, hey, 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 you suck. And then occasionally they go, yeah, yeah, could you sign this, please, could you sign this? And that's it, and then like, that's basically what we do. Uh, and it's so funny because that really shows priorities, right? We, we really give a lot of value to people who have done something special, and then we show them a lot of attention, and then when they're in front of people, they give their opinions, and we're like, hey, I don't like that, you suck! And then they go down a little bit, and someone comes up, and they're like, see? Hey, no, you suck! That's America. That's what we do. That's how, that's how we do things. Which is why it's so dangerous to be in the middle going, hey, maybe we don't all suck. They're like, no, you suck, because you didn't pick a side. Right? You're like, oh, shit. Right? That's a terrifying place to be. And that's where I am uh, right now. I'm going to wait for someone to answer the phone. And that's where I'm at right now, all right? Because... A couple weeks ago, I came home. And this was literally 16 days ago. I came home from being on the road for three weeks, and I lay down in bed, and at 3.25 in the morning, for some reason I woke up because I heard what very much sounded like someone using my bong without me. <laughs> like, hey, come on. At least wake me up, you know? <laughs> But it turns out it wasn't my bomb. Uh, it turns out it was a fire. Uh, and that fire was raging. A seven alarm fire right next door. The house right next door. And when I say right next door, you live in Los Angeles. I mean, I could stick my hand out the window and touch that house. But I could touch my window and feel how hot it was. I went, time to go. And it's so funny because they always say, you know, in a house fire, what are you going to take? And you always play that metaphorical game your entire life. And then all of a sudden it happens to you. Oh my gosh, your house is about to be on fire. You've got five minutes, there are six firefighters outside, what are you gonna take? And I took my wife, uh, I got her up, and I got her in clothes, and I got my cats, Roz and Daphne, uh, and I put them in my backpack, and they're just meowing in there, you know? <laughs> and then I went around, and uh, I was like, what else can I get? I got my guitar that was signed by all the comedians I've ever performed with when I was in my early years, and then I had to cover myself because it was cold outside, and I grabbed my Mariner's jacket, that I gave my dad. And my dad gave it back to me when I moved to LA. He's like, you're gonna represent this team in LA. I'm like, I'm not sure I want to. <laughs> so I go outside and they're in the car safely. We parked right out in front and I watch as this house just burn to the ground. I mean, flames all the way up, all as high as I could see. And this stranger walked up to me out of nowhere, just like a little angel, right? Just to show you, you know, what can happen to the world. And he just walks up to me, and he goes, dude, what's happening here? And I was like, it's on fire, dude. And he goes, yeah, I know. I mean, 
you know what happened? I was like, it's just like this. I, I, don't, I don't know who's responsible. I, I, I don't know how long it's gonna go on for. I, I don't know if we're gonna be okay or not. He goes, well, I know what happened. You traded Alex Rodriguez in 2001. <laughs> Your team was great from 1995 to 2001. And then for some reason, you go trading every player off to the Yankees and making them great for the rest of time. Your team is a foreign team. That's why it's on fire, man. No, bro, my house is literally on fire. It is. Now that's why they call it T-Mobile Park, for God's sakes. It's on fire. Seriously, bro. And walks off. I don't know if he ever even saw the actual fire. He saw an old school Mariners jacket and his priorities said, that guy needs some sympathy right now. And that's all I'm saying.